everybody, and welcome back. In today's episode, we're getting closer to getting this bad mamma jamma up and running. Now, here's the deal. I bought this last January. I saw the hammer for the first time on January 15th. I think I got it unloaded in the shop on the 18th. And then I did a whole restoration and made it look pretty and whatnot, but I've been spending the rest of that entire time tracking down the exact right pieces to get this thing ready to rock and roll. That means shafting, that means flywheels and pulleys, that means the materials for the base. So today, we're gonna be forging some stuff for the linkage so that, oh my gosh, so that this dude right here can move back and forth. We're gonna be doing other things, we're gonna do some woodworking, some fabrication, and before we make any of the woodworkers mad, we're gonna to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare. So, the way that we have control over the hammer is through the treadle, this guy. And this dude has a connecting rod that goes from the pivot point up to that little piece that we were just pointing at. That then connects to the brake on the back, which stops the flywheel, that's this piece. It slows down the flywheel and gives you control to be able to stop the hammer which is a really awesome and very handy thing to have on a mechanical hammer. My little giant doesn't have it so that when you're running it, it just kind of keeps on running when you let off the treadle. It's like coasting in your car rather than laying on the brakes. We're gonna be forging two pieces for this system right here. One to go from that point to the turnbuckle and then from the turnbuckle to this point right here. They need to have a loop on either end to be able to connect to our attachment points and then we need to weld on some threading so that they are able to pivot back and forth, move back and forth with the turnbuckle. Look at that, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, in reality, the belt will be going around that wheel, uh, and so when I am pulling tight, right now it kind of like, you got pressure, and then it sinks in. But when the belt's going around it, it'll be constantly putting pressure, and it won't ever get to that place where it kind of flops over. So it will have its own spring tension to it a little bit, but the next piece that we need to forge is actually a replacement for this guy. This, I, this treadle wasn't hooked up when I first got it, uh, but basically, the concept is you have a piece that goes from here to there, and then you slide that spring over the top like so, throw your nut down on it, uh, and then when you step down on the treadle, you're compressing this spring from the top side here. So as you step down, that's connected there, and it compresses, but this sucks. It just does. This is not, I don't know exactly what they meant 
for that to be because uh, you don't want it to be able to slip side to side. You should probably have something that's held uh, taut in there. So what I'm, the plan is, is to take a piece of 5 8 inch all thread, grind some of the threads off so we have maybe seven or eight inches of thread showing here. Um, ah, we don't even need that. Five, four or five inches of threads showing. Uh, and then we'll forge it down and forge a little paddle so that we can bolt through the treadle and that so that when we step down on the treadle, we'll be compressing that spring and it'll look good and it will work. We need to go to the hardware store to pick up a couple things, some hardware for that so that it's not just a bolt and there's actually a nut on the other side holding it in on the top. And then also I need to grab a half inch bolt or five eighths or three, or three quarter to be able to forge into our little treadle hookup spring system because quite frankly, I forgot that I needed the other piece of that all thread. You'll see what it's for later on. Uh, let's go. I need to a half. Perfect. Wow, that is so gritty. Wow. And hefty. All right, it's the next morning now and we're gonna go ahead. I went to Ace and picked up a couple different springs. This one was a little bit hefty and made the treadling experience cumbersome and we don't want a cumbersome treadling experience so I bought all sorts of weird bits of hardware that we're going to try to make this a nice smooth operating system. Uh, we're going to make it so that the threads of the rod aren't hitting the spring or this ear right here. All right, and then. Pressure. It'll be a little bit tighter when we have the belt on there, but this feels great. Well, we've got this beautifully blackened up hammer and some very ugly zinc coated hardware, and we're going to fix that Kan Un rattle can. Over the threading? Yes, please. Sweet. So the plan is to use three pieces of 5 8 all thread to bolt these suckers together. That means we need to drill all the way through and then bolt it. Oh, maybe we'll go, we'll go four inches in. Oh, this is why people use pencils. So we've got our lines. I'm going to number our boards here just, just in case.
fucking start. We're going to quickly thank this episode's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on all sorts of stuff, things from videography to photography to drawing to learning how to be a better YouTuber. The class that I want to talk about today is YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. Now, this class was all about the development of one YouTuber's career, and my big takeaway from this video is that it's really important if you're going to be a creator to make the kind of videos that you would enjoy watching. And so things that are going to be entertaining, educational, and inspiring are all wonderful things to base your channel off of. And so that's something I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on, making sure that everything that I put out is something that I would want to watch, and I think we're there so far, but I'm excited to get to dig into more of that stuff that I personally find super, super interesting. I love so the first thousand of you that click the link in the description are going to get a month of premium Skillshare for free. Make sure to check that out at the link in the description. And with that, let's move on to finishing up the base. Well, with the base all stuck together, I was thinking about maybe doing some angle iron banding around the top. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I maybe will do it later on down the line, see if that's something that I feel like would be beneficial once it's underneath the hammer, but for now, we're gonna to get to work on the dies of the hammer. Now, there's a couple things I need to do. I need to knock out and free up the sow block key. I need to fit the bottom die key, and I need to clean up the dies. Uh, right now, they're all rusty and old, and I haven't touched them at all, and so I need to take them in the grinding room, clean them up, get a nice surface finish on there, see how we're doing with that. Uh, I think I need to do some mill work on them. I might not do that yet. I may run the hammer and see how I like them before I start doing stuff like that. For now, let's go ahead and get to work on knocking out that bottom sow block key. So this piece right here is the sow block. As you can see, it's got a dovetail down here and it's dovetailed into the anvil. Now this is the wide side of the key. You can see that it chipped out that bottom male part of the dovetail a little bit, uh, but it's really not too bad. Uh, I just wanna get that key out of there, have a look at it. Make sure it has good contact. Uh, maybe add some new shimming in there. The reason why I really want to get this key out of here is that uh, it allows for side-to-side -side adjustment of the sow block so that you can get your dies lined up a lot more precisely. Um, and so uh, while it is probably just fine and I don't think I'm going to need to use it uh, to, to get too much adjustment, I want to have that option if I do need it. Okay, so that key didn't move at all while I was wailing on it, so I'm just gonna keep on uh, hitting it with penetrating oil for a little while, uh, see if that does anything to it at all, and while we're waiting for that to hopefully free up uh, before we try any more aggressive means of, of loosening it, uh, we'll get to work on this die and that key, and the first thing that, that key needs is to have all of the rust knocked off of it. Okay, quick note about this key specifically is that you can see first off the areas where it was like super rusted, it's kind of pitted out, uh, very common for being by the sea for the last at least probably 40 or 50 years. Um, it's been there presumably since the 20s when it was originally made. It appears that they took their piece of bar stock, shaped it down, uh, got the right taper in there using the shaper, um, and then very quickly used a, uh, a big grinding wheel to kind of clean up some of the edges here just a little bit. Uh, and then they were like, ah, okay. And then they gave up on it and never actually fit the key. So what we're gonna do is clean this thing off using some degreaser, and then we're gonna coat it in 
some blue layout fluid, and we're gonna make sure that when we drive that thing there, we've got 80 to 90% contact. Uh, so this thing is really gonna be holding on real well. And if we have 90% contact, that means that then we're not putting any stress in any really concentrated areas, which cast iron, which is what that sow block is made out of, really doesn't like. Uh, so we're gonna make sure that we have a super nice fit. We're gonna fit this thing up almost like we would fit a guard onto a knife handle. Yeah, where we get, oh, we got great contact on that side. Heck yeah. Nice. All right, so next step, now that we've figured out that we're contacting basically everywhere where it looks gross, it's time to take a file to those areas and work them down so that those aren't the only parts that are contacting. We work down the high spots uh, until we have much nicer contact. I don't know exactly when the camera died because I was so focused on getting that key out because, uh, well, I test fit it one time, did a little bit of filing, test fit it again, and then it was stuck. Now, here's the deal. We've got really good contact on this side. We've got maybe 60 to 70% contact, maybe even more up front, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so I'm. I'll maybe do a little bit more to this side, but really not a whole lot. This side, on the other hand, has just one big old fat, chonky streak. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, it's all right. We're getting contact on that side. We're getting contact on the other side. We're contacting on all of the sides. I'm really, I don't think, gonna do a whole lot more until the dies are ready and the hammer is running, because that was a, a process. And so next time I do it, I'd like to maybe have the option of just leaving it in and running the hammer. But that's not an option right now because we've got to take that die out and do some work to it. Hello. Okay. Ew. This is also freshly shaped. There's still raw, raw shaper marks on there. That is so cool. I'll go out on a limb and say dies, for the most part, are not like knives. You don't want you don't want them to be sharp. Maybe we take this into the grinding room. Now we gotta take a quick break from working on this die to go work on something a little bit more time sensitive. Well, I'm here with my friend Gavin. Gavin, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, Gavin is the owner of a awesome CNC router. That's right, three axis CNC router. Which is sweet because it means that we can make a pulley for, my, for the motor uh, using not MDF, but a big old slab of micarta that I just got. Uh, so, yeah, it's not something I could do all by hand. Well, I could, but it would take for literally ever. We need um, this how thick? Uh, we need this to be a seven inch thick or at wherever right around there uh, pulley. So the plan is to take some five eighths inch thick micarta, cut out discs that look like that, and then we'll be able to stack them up and throw it on the motor with some indexing pins and glue and whatnot in there as well. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, we got all of our discs cut up and looking pretty. Gavin, thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, Good to help out. Real quick, tell us about your channel and what you do here. Yeah, 42 Pursuit on all of the things. I am in electronics, woodworking, learning metalworking and CNC things, just learning along the way, pursuit of knowledge, pursuit of 42. That's it. Heck yeah, awesome. Well, with that, let's head back to the shop and get these things stuck together. All right, now that we've got an unholy amount of 5 8 inch thick micarta discs cut, it's time to introduce you to the rest of the materials that we'll be using to build our pulley. 3 8 inch thick mild steel and some 3 16 inch plate. Let's get to work. So we got the two inch wide holes cut in the middle. We've got our scribe lines scribed on the outside here, but I am not going to get this thing finished up in today's episode because I need to fly to Maryland right now to go demonstrate at a hammer in talking about Damascus and other fun stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. Thank you patrons for patronizing me. I appreciate all of you and I will see you on the next one wherein we will hopefully Oh, we've got a lot to do. I need to rent a forklift. I need to do more stuff. I think we got two more episodes before the hammer will be hitting hot steel. But I can't wait to get there, and thank you guys so much for following along. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.